everybody welcome back to another video today we will be looking at taking off staircase wax we have been doing different takeoffs we have done the substructure works we have done the superstructure works and if you would want to see those videos kindly check the description box we shall put all those links there so welcome back uh for all those who have subscribed thank you so much and for those who are new here or you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe so that you can continue making videos for you so today we'll be looking into details about taking off staircase works you'll be given a plan in a section like the one that you can see on your screen this is the plan and the section of the staircase sometimes you'll be even given the detail the detail is the center part that you can see now uh, when you're taking off the staircase works you will be required to follow a certain procedure for example uh, when we are taking off we can start with concrete work then we go to the balustrades then we go to the finishes in concrete work we shall do form work for the concrete then the concrete itself then the reinforcement in it because it has to have reinforcement so that it can it can, it can hold the concrete and the reinforcements will make the the body of the staircase then we shall go to the balustrades the balustrades includes the rails the balusters the standards the holes and the milled steel plates all these we shall be able to see them as we continue and we shall also understand this part of the staircase well so then we shall go to the finishes for example it will depend on the plan that you're given and the details maybe they can have terrace or finish then on the staircase there could be an unslip insert there could be plaster on the soffits then there is painting so we shall follow all these procedures when we are taking off so uh, just a, an introduction when you are getting to the staircase a staircase usually has a flight a landing then a flight we start from the ground floor we go to a flight a landing then a flight to the first floor the landing is that center part between the flights so that one was very important before we start taking off for you to note. We, also, we have also done other videos on the staircase. Uh, maybe if you need some more explanation, you can just check them out. They are in our videos. So when we are, uh, when we are calculating the formwork of the landing, if you look at the section part, you can be able to see this straight part. That is where, that is what we shall consider as the width of the landing. Only this straight part. Where it has started to get slanted, that one we shall calculate it in the flight. So I hope that is understood. So for the width of the landing, we shall take 200 for the wall because the concrete usually goes up to the end. If you want to really understand that point, kindly go and look at our video for the concrete and in staircase i think we shall get that one very well there we shall i shall link it after this video so that you can go check it the concrete is going to the edge then 200 which is going to the edge plus 1100 minus 250 so uh the the width of the landing will be 1100 minus 250 850 then we shall take uh for the formwork you know we do not do formwork where there's a wall so the width of the landing will be 1100 minus 250 the length of the landing shall be from uh where there are no walls actually the place where there are no walls that's where we shall take the the length of the landing so it will be 1100 plus 200 plus 1100 because formwork only applies where there are no walls so let's go to the first flight the first flight so that you can be able to calculate the form one we shall take this hypotenuse of the hypotenuse which one which is labeled 1780.9 that one it was not given we had to calculate it how did we calculate it 
we are usually given the length of the trend and the height of the riser. So if we are given the length of the trend and the height of the riser, we can be able to calculate this hypotenuse of the so feet. So how do we calculate it? We usually make some extensions of the trend and also extensions of the riser so that we can be able to know the base of the triangle will be formed by how many trends and the height of the triangle will be formed by how many risers. Then when we use Pythagoras theorem, which is a b squared plus b squared equals c squared, we shall be able to calculate the length of the sulfate. So we, shall, we have taken the base of the triangle shall be made by two, six of the trends. One trend is 250. 250 times 6, 1500. The height is made up of how many risers? 6. The height of the riser is 160. So the length of the, the height of the triangle is 160 times 6. That one is 960. Then, uh -huh, we go to the second flight. The second flight, we take the length and the height of the triangle. The length and the, the, the base of the triangle is made up of the trends. How many trends make the base of the triangle? It is nine trends. So, what is the length of one trend? 250. 250 times 9, 2250. Then we go to the height. The height is made up of Risers. How many risers? Nine. Then the height of one riser is 160. So 160 times 9, 1440. So the hypotenuse of the sulfate will be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 2250 squared plus 1440 squared, we get 2671.38. So we have already got the length of the sulfate. So to the formwork are the sloping surface of the triangle. How do we calculate it? This one is said that it's calculated in area. The area shall be the length of the sloping surface times the width of the staircase are the sloping surface. The width that is floating is 1100 because the one at the walls do not need formwork. Then the other one will be 2.67 then we multiply by 1.10 because where there is was there is no need for formal. We go to the landing. The landing, uh -huh, as I had explained, the length of the landing. We shall check 2 times 1100, then we add the 200 at the center. It will be 2400. Because where there is wall, there is no need for formwork. So the, the, the measurements of the landing will be 2.4 and 0 0.85. 0 0.85, I already explained how we got the width. It's 1100 minus 250 because 250 is catered for by the sloping surface. So we go to the formwork at the edges of the landing. And the edges is to prevent the concrete from pouring. We have to hold it to form some height. So what is the length of that formwork at the landing? We shall use the plan. On the plan, if you can see, we need formwork at the edges on the wind side. Because on the wind side, you can see... Uh, on, on one side, we, we usually assume that on the, on the side that is, is outside the house, there is no wall that has been constructed. So, uh -huh, the, the, on the wind side, it shall be 1100 plus 200. 1100 plus 200. Then... Mm -hmm. There is this other part, uh, the wall at the center of the two flights. That one, there will be space there, so we need formwork of 0 0.2 meters. Then, there is on the wind length side of the landing. On the length side of the landing, we need formwork. So, we shall take the total length, 200 plus 1100 plus 200 plus 1100 plus 200. That will give us 2.6 meters so that one formwork uh, we shall meet much in at uh, the angels is measured in linear meters so we shall just write the dimension on the dimension column so we shall go to uh zone formwork at the angels of the trigger extreme width 300 millimeters wide cut into profiles of risers 
and goings. So at the edges of the trigger, we shall go to the trigger part of the staircase. If this on the sloping surface, the edges of the sloping surface are called the trigger. What is the length of the formwork we shall need? It shall be equal to the length of the sloping surface, which is the hypotenuse that we calculated. So it shall be 1.78 and 2.67. Then we shall go to sewn formwork to the edges of risers. You know, so that the risers can form, we have to do formwork at the risers. So what is the length of this formwork at the risers? So, uh, formwork at the riser, it shall be equal to the number of risers times the width of the risers. The width of the risers is the width of the staircase on the flight. So, it shall be 1100. So, it shall be uh, the number of risers times 1.10. We go to now the concrete. We are done with the formwork. Because we were supposed to do the formwork below to hold the, the staircase, then formwork at the sides. The one below, we have called it formwork at the soffit. Then the one at the edges, the, the sides, we have called it formwork at the edges. Now, we go to concrete. Concrete, uh-huh. Concrete, we shall start with uh, concrete on the landing. You know, concrete, we, it shall go up to half of the walls on the sides, then up to the edge of the wall on the landing. The wall at the landing, the one that has a window, the concrete will get up to the end. But the, for the walls on the sides, concrete will go up to halfway. Why does it go up to halfway? For support. When you're outside the house, on the length, on the flights, you'll not be able to note that there is a staircase going up. But when you're outside, on the side of the window, you'll be able to see the slab because the slab goes up to the end of the wall. So let's go to the concrete on the landing. What is the dimensions of that concrete? It's the total length of, from between the wall, half the wall, on the sides, these walls on the sides where there are flights, the wall where there are flights, the concrete goes halfway. So it shall take, if the thickness of the wall is 200, concrete will go up to 100. So it will be 100 plus 1100 plus 200 plus 1100 plus 100 it shall give us 2.6 meters. Then for the wind, the concrete we shall calculate using the plan and even when you go to the section you can be able to calculate all this flat part on the landing and you can see the dimensions will be 1100 plus 200 which shall give us 1.3 we go to the concrete on the flights concrete on the flight is usually calculated in volume so what is the volume of the concrete of this flight it shall be the length of the soffit times the width of the staircase at the flight times the thickness of the concrete. So, uh -huh, the length of the surface, it will be 1.78 and the other one will be 2.67. Then, uh -huh, we shall take the width of the staircase at the flight. The width of the staircase at the flight will be 1100 if you can see then we take half of the wall because the volume is the concrete is going up to the half of the wall so 1100 plus 100 1.2 what is the height of that concrete at the flight if you look closely uh -huh, at the flight we have we have the staircases so if we if we go to the shape of the concrete on the flight. Then we draw a straight line from up there to below there. We can see we form a rectangle below the triangles. There are the triangles which has the steps, then there is a rectangle. So at the concrete at the flight, we shall calculate the one at the rectangle. And the, rank, uh, the one at the rectangle, the depth can only be seen at the detail, which is given. We have been given the section, the plan, and the detail. On the detail, you can see that part labeled 140. That is the depth of the concrete on the rectangular part of the flight. So, the volume of the concrete in the rectangular part of the flight will be 
one uh, the, the the length of the so feet times the width of the staircase at the flight then we multiply by 1.4 so that is so good so that one we have been able to calculate the volume of concrete on the flight now we shall go uh -huh, we we have still remained the triangular parts we need to find the volume of the concrete in the triangular part. This one is the one that has remained. So, how do we calculate the volume of a triangular? Do we call it a prism? Yes, we take the surface area of the triangle, we multiply by the length of the width of the staircase of the flight. So, a half base height, a half times base, base is the trend, then height is the riser. We multiply by the number of steps. So that one we have been able to calculate the volume of concrete in the field. So now the reinforcements. The reinforcements, uh -huh, we shall start with the reinforcement on the landing. If you look at the section, you can see these black spots. These ones shows the reinforcements that are going across the landing. Across the landing. So they are moving from one inch of the landing to the other. So what is the length of the landing first of all? The length of the landing that the staircase will occupy is 100 half of the wall plus 1100 plus 200 plus 1100 plus 100. That gives us 2600. Then when we come to, stair, uh, to the reinforcement, the reinforcement is not just a straight line. It usually has a bend just as you can see. So it shall be a bend, uh, it, then a straight then bend so what is the length of the bend that we shall give an allowance for so if we say that we give an allowance for 150 millimeters for this uh for the landing the length of the landing we shall add 150 on both sides of the reinforcement so what is the length of the reinforcement that we shall require in one bar so it shall be between 600 plus 300 300 is 2 times 150 we shall get 29 so, if we have 29 millimeters bars, how many do we require them to go across the landing? So, so that you can know across the landing how many we shall require to go along the length of the staircase, we shall use the width. So, what is the width of the landing? The width of the landing is 1100 plus 200. So, 1100 plus 200 is 1300. Then the concrete at the landing will occupy 1300. But the concrete will need some allowance to get to the reinforcement. That allowance that we usually leave, the reinforcement does not lift the edge of the concrete. So that when we concrete, you will not be able to see reinforcement. That allowance that we leave is called a cover. So we shall allow 15 millimeters on each side of the, of the landing for the concrete cover so we shall take 1300 minus 2 times 15 15 is the cover then we divide by the spacing of the bars the spacing of the bars if you can look see at the section we are told 12 millimeters bars both ways at 200 centers on the landing so it shall be 1300 minus 30 over 200 plus 1 to find the number of bars on the landing that are lying across the wing so across the wing is on the length side so there will be 7.35 if we round off 7.35 to the nearest whole number, it's 7. So it shall be 7 bars measuring 2.9 meters on the landing. So these ones will be arranged along the length of the landing. So we need to calculate how many bars then shall be going across the length on the wind side. How many bars? Okay. So we shall go to the width of the landing. If we find first of all what is the length of these bars that shall be placed along the width of the landing. So, uh huh. So the length, the width of the landing is how much? It's 1100 plus 200. Concrete is getting up to the edge on the of the wall. So that's 100. We give an allowance for the beds 150 on each side. So it then be 1300 plus 300, which is 1600. So if it's 1600, 
uh, how many bars do we need to go across the length so we shall take uh, the total length on the landing we subtract the covers the covers will be 15 on each side so 2600 minus 30 we divide by 200 which is the spacing of the bars plus 1 so it shall be 13.5 say 14 so there will be 14 bars measuring 1.6 1.6 meters on along the width of the landing Acro and, and along the width is across the length so we what is the the total uh, number of reinforcements and the length that we shall need on the flight first of all we shall calculate along the surface of the landing how many bars we shall need first of all what is the length of this bus so the length of the surface for the first flight will be 1780 1780 plus uh, the bends we shall add 300 on each side so if we add 300 on each side it shall be 600 so it will be 1780 plus 600 you get 28 30 so we shall cut bars measuring 28 30 how many bars to get the number of bars, we shall go to the width of the flight, we divide by the spacing. The width of the flight is 1100 plus 100 to get there to the half of the wall. We subtract the covers on both sides 15, 15. We divide by the spacing of the bars, which is 200. We shall get 6.85, so say 7. So we shall need 7 bars, measuring 2880 on the first flight. Flight. On the second flight, we shall take the length of the surface is 2670. We earn the beds. Beds is 300, 300, 600. So the, bar, the length of the bars we shall use on the surface of the second flight will be 3270. How many bars? The bars will be determined by the width of the landing, the width of the flight. So it will be 1200 minus the covers 1515 15, divided by the spacing of 200. We plus one so it shall be 6.85 so say seven so on the second flight we shall need seven bars measuring 3.27 meters so the only reinforcements which we have not calculated is across the flights and that one in the details we have been told it's 10 millimeters bars at every step so the simplest question we shall ask ourselves shall we require so we shall calculate we shall count the steps 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so there will be 14 steps and the width of the landing shall be the, the width of the flight shall be aha uh -huh, it shall be 1.1 then we add we shall add the beds. We shall add the beds. The beds, they shall be 150, 150. So if we add the beds, 1.3, you know, the wind of the flight is 1.3. 1.3 plus 300, we shall get 1600. Sorry, 1100 plus 100 to get the sense of the wall is 1200. 1200 plus 300 for the bed is uh, 1500. 1500 minus 30 for the cover, concrete cover is 1470. So if we come to summarize the reinforcements we shall need, we shall start with the ones on the, we shall start with the ones on the landing the landing uh -huh. the ones that are going along the length of the landing they were eight in number measuring 2.90 the ones that were coming across the landing on the wind side they were 14 measuring 1.6 the ones on the first flight going along the surface of the first flight they were 7, measuring 2.38. The ones on the second flight, which are parallel to the surface of the uh, second flight, they are 7, measuring 3.27. And the ones which are 10 millimeters uh, going each on every step is they are 14, measuring 
four seven. So that um, we are done with the reinforcement. Okay, so let's go to the balustrades. The balustrades, the balustrades, we shall be able to uh, start with the handrails. The handrails, if you can go to the section, we can see 50 by 150 Mvuli handrails. These handrails need to also be painted. And there is also, if you can see the handrail, the lower part parallel to the handrail, we can see there is a 50 by 20 millimeters intermediate rail. All these, they have the same measurements. Eh? Then the intermediate rail also needs to be painted. So the total uh, length for these, all these things that shall be done, putting the handrail, installing the handrail, installing the intermediate metal, then also painting the, both the handrails and the metal, the intermediate rail, all of them will have the same dimensions. So which are these dimensions? The handrails, uh, they, they will be first on the first flight, which is equal to the length of the soffit of the first flight, that is 1.78. On the second flight, the length of the handrail will be equal to the length of the soffit of the second flight, that is 2.67. Then if you go to the flight, you can see this part between the two flights, which is 200 millimeters. There, we shall also need a handrail, which measures 200 millimeters, 0.2 meters. And also, if you look at the plan, once you go to the first floor, there is this other part that will need the handrail, and it's shown on the plan. This part, what is the measurement? It's 1100 plus 200, which is 1300. So that one, if we do these measurements, they represent the handrails, the, co the painting on the handrails, then we have the uh, intermediate rail and the painting on the intermediate rail to the standards the standards they are these parts which are vertical and they are getting to the floor the ones that are only getting to the slab they are the standards so how many standards do we have we count the one at the first step it's one the one at the last step on the landing another one the one at the center of the second flight another one the one which is measure it's written 13 on the 13th step then the other one is on the end on the first floor from the flight that is the fourth one then if you look at the plan on the plan of the staircase you can see see this where we have the 50 by 150 Mvuri handrail, you can see these dark circles that you can see. Those ones shows the, the standards from the plan view. From the plan view. So, uh -huh, these ones, you shall just count them. So, you shall count 1, 2, 3. So, we had 4 plus 3. So, they are 7. 7 standards. You usually write 7, you multiply by 1. Milled steel standard, which is 1050 millimeters long. This one, you shall get it from this section. Long welded to a mess plate at top and fishtailed groot in the concrete at the bottom. Then, the same 7 will represent the holes for 2.5 millimeters diameter metal standards in concrete to, to make work good. So, for these two works, they shall be represented by this seven so we shall go to the balustrades now the balustrades they are these vertical parts at the center of the standards which are not getting to the concrete floor when you look at the section they are described as 20 by 20 hollow section ms baluster 600 millimeters long at 125 millimeters center to center now we want to calculate the number of balustrades the balustrades the number we shall take the length of the soffit we divide by the spacing of the balustrades, then we shall subtract the standards. For example, in the first flight, the length of the soffit is 1780. We shall divide by 125. Then, plus 1 to get the total number of balustrades because it's from end to end. Then, how many standards are on the first flight? There are 2. So, we shall subtract. So we get 13. On the second flight, the length of the second flight is 2671. We divide by 125 plus 1. 
Then how many standards are already in the second flight? There are three standards. You subtract three to get the number of balustrades. So we shall have, say, 19 balustrades. Uh, so when we shall be taking off the balustrades, we shall calculate the total number of balustrades. You see, uh, on the plan where we have the 50 by 150 Mvuli handrail, we shall also have the balustrades. The same spacing 125. So we shall take 1300, which is 1100 plus 200 of the wall, shall be 1300, we divide by 125 plus 1, then we subtract the number of standards on that on that uh, first flight. So they are already three. So we shall have a remainder of 8.4, say 8. So the total number of balustrades will be 13, first flight, 19, second flight, plus 8 on the first floor. We get total 40. So 40 by 1, 20 by 20 millimeters hollow section, milled steel balustrades, 600 millimeters long welded to a mess plate at the top and to the intermediate rail at the bottom. That is the description. So we go to the MS plates now. MS plates, they're usually done to hold the standards in the concrete. So how many MS plates we have? Do we have? If we have seven standards, we shall have seven MS plates. So it shall be seven by one, size six millimeters by 30 by 150 millimeters MS plates. We shall go to the painting. We are already done with the barrel strains. So, how we shall calculate now the areas that we shall need to paint. For example, if we are, we are painting the balustrades, you know, we had already done measurements for the painting of standard, uh, of the handrail and the intermediate rail, because that one measured in linear meter. But the other one for the balustrades and the standards, that one, we usually find the perimeter, the guard of the balustrades and the standards. What is the guard of the balustrades? If you go to the section, we are told it's 20 by 20 hollow section MS baluster. So if it's measuring 20 by 20, the guard is the perimeter going around the baluster. It shall be 20 by 20 by 20 by 20. If you add all of them, it shall be 80. If we go to the standard, the measurement of the standards is 25 millimeters uh, you know, it's if it's 25 millimeters MS, uh, 10, 50 millimeters long standards, it measures 25 by 25. So the guard of the standard will be 25 times 4, 100. So how many balustrades do we have? 40. We multiply by the guard of the baluster, 0 0.60. Then the standards, there are 7. The guard of the standard is 1.00. The description will be Prime and apply three coats of second grade gloss paint to surfaces not exceeding 100 millimeters guard internally. So, uh -huh, that one will cater for the uh, painting of the balustrades and the standards because we already know the height of the balustrades and the height of the standards. We go to landing the painting at the landing so uh what is the uh -huh, what we are told 25 millimeters thick polish on landing uh, so if we are doing the landing the landing will be where you know after we have then the concrete, we shall do the, the wall where there was a wall. So we shall calculate where there is no wall. For the length of the landing, we shall check where there is no wall is 1100 plus 200 plus 1100. That is 2.4. For the width of the landing, it shall be 1100. Because where there is a wall, there will be a wall. So we shall not be doing any finishes to 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 where there is a wall. So the finishes that we shall do on the landing, the measurement shall be 2.4 by 1.1. Then we go to finishes to the trend, which is to 50 millimeters wide. The trends, how many trends do we have? The trends will be depend on the number of steps. The number of steps there are 14. How many trends do we have? 14. What is the length of the trend? 1.10.
that is 1.1 meters. So finishes, we had already said 25 millimeters thick polish on landing. So the same ditto, but to trend to 50 millimeters wide. That shall be done. We shall calculate it in linear meters on the trend. So it's 14 times 1.1 meters. To terrazzo cutting, 20 millimeters thick polished to terrazzo cutting curved at the junction between the floor and the wall. At the landing, we shall do scatting between the wall and the floor. So scatting is measured in linear meters. What is the total length of the scatting? On the length side, we shall measure from in the wall to the up to the other wall. Where, in, where the wall is occupying, we shall not do scatting because scatting is done internally. So we shall start 1100 plus 200 plus 1100, 2.4. For the width of the landing, it shall be 1100 and the other side 1100. So the total length for the scatting will be 2.4 and 2 times 1.10. The next one is 12 millimeters thick cement sand plaster to horizontal surface of the landing finished with wood float. On the landing below, below the concrete, when you go under the landing, you shall see the surface where there was formwork. So what is the area that shall be done plaster? It shall be, we shall take 1100 minus 250, we get 0 0.85 times the length of the landing, that is 1100 plus 200 plus 1100 that one shall be 2.4 so it's 2.4 points times 0 0.85 because this one is the same measurement to the formwork at the surface of the landing then we go to the plaster at the so sloping surface of the staircase it will be the same with the formwork at the surface of the staircase to calculate it so it shall be the length of the surface is 1.78 the width 1.10 the sec on the first second flight 2.67 the width 1.10 so you shall let the description 12 millimeters thick cement side ratio 1 is to 3 plaster to sloping surface of staircase finished with steel float and prepared and applied at then we go to the plaster to the trigger of the staircase. This one is measured in linear meter. The trigger we said it's the angles of the flight. So we shall take the length of the angles of the surface, 1.78, and for the second flight, 2.67. Then we shall finish with the extra over for polished terrazzo for non slip inserts. Non slip inserts they are placed across the 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 land the flights where there are the steps how many steps do we have 14 so how many non-slip inserts will we have 14 what is the length of those non-slip inserts the width of the flight so it should be 14 times 1.1 1 .1. so that is the end of the staircase of the staircase takeoff so we did the we started with the Formwork, we went to concrete, we went to reinforcement, then we went to the value strength, and we finished with the finishes. In case you have any questions, kindly feel free to write them in the comment section and we shall address them. In case you would need some more explanations, there are those short videos showing the explanations for the turkeys formworks kindly find them also in in our videos so kindly continue watching and also subscribing so that we can continue to make this content for you if you like this video kindly give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video thanks for watching